Hi everyone, it's Rain here from Rain's Kitchen and Garden. I'm out in my garden today and I'm going to be making hoop houses and transplanting most of my seedlings. Today I'm wearing my Akubra down under hat. It's an Australian outback hat. It's my favorite hat. And I have a stampede string on it in case it gets windy. I always show you the band just so you can see it, but this time I have feathers. I love putting feathers on my hats. Actually, a couple of years ago, we went to a farmer's market and the farmer there was nice enough to allow us to go into his chicken coop and look for feathers. And there's a nice rooster feather on this one. And that's where I got it. And I've got the head net out because the black flies are starting to get attracted to my hat. <laughs> so away I go. In my past videos, I've talked about how two years ago when I moved here, I planned a huge garden and we had to have a well dug or drilled because we ran out of water and all of the well dust just covered my raised beds and when it rained, it basically turned into cement. When I say well dust, I mean basically when, when they drill down 350 feet, which they had to for our well, they hit rock and they hit uh, all sorts of... I don't know what, what the layers are underground, but they hit mostly rock and that's the dust that flies up. And when they, ha when they were trying to remove all that dust, they had to pour in water. So it was almost coming up through the hole that they were drilling like lava and it started spreading all over the place. And I was watching with dread in my stomach at one point saying, there go my green onions, oh, there go my potatoes, there go my strawberries all over but what what could we do we needed water right I'm gonna show you what it looks like this is what it looks like it almost looks like gravel you know and basically that stuff covered my entire raised bed area two years ago I did a lot of work to remove it all and now I think I'm okay with everything but as you can see I, I was talking about how it kind of looked like it was flowing like lava from a volcano well it was doing that and it's all kind of flowed over here into the side woods and I don't know how to remove it I would need a backhoe to remove that since we're in the garden I thought I'd give you a little tour I've got these strawberries that are growing in this bed these actually survived the well dust incident they didn't grow last year but they're they seem to be growing this year I have to weed this bed my garlic is coming up really nicely. I planted that last fall. In this bed, we have all mint. This was all transplanted. It's wild mint. There's a lot of it, and I have to weed this bed too. Those are my fingerling potatoes in there. Nothing's growing yet. But these are my beautiful chives. They're starting to flower. We're not touching them this year. We want them to develop into strong plants. So we're going to leave them as is and harvest some of them next year. In this bed, I also planted my 109 <laughs> um, onion sets. And as you can see here, they're starting to pop up already. Really cool. And of course, the asparagus, which is now going to seed. It's way too tall. I harvested what I could, a third of it. Let's see if you can get a better look this way. See how tall they are? So those are basically going to, I'm going to leave those alone and then next year I'll be able to harvest pretty much all of them. And just some fun, something fun here. I planted corn <laughs> just to see if I could grow it in two pots. And I've already got, it looks like 10 or 11 little sprouts of corn popping up. That's very exciting. Well, it didn't take long for me to get the head net out. The black flies have found me. I'm going to try to, my best to ignore them today because they're driving me bananas. I think I got about 20 bites yesterday. So this is the bed where I planted my three raspberry canes. And so far they're starting to flower a little bit, if that's what you call it. There's a little blooming happening on each raspberry plant so I'm very very happy about that. I started to look up companion planting because I basically have half of this raised bed empty now and I didn't want to put just anything in there so I looked up what would be a good companion plant for raspberries and one of them is turnips and the reason why we companion plant is there are three reasons I think 
There may be more. I don't know there are everything there is to know about companion planting. But what, from what I've learned is companion planting helps to repel pests. It helps to attract pollinators. And in some cases, it helps to provide, to provide shade for shade-loving plants, like maybe spinach, who, who doesn't really want to be in the full sun. So I've decided to choose turnips because turnips help to repel the harlequin beetle, which goes after raspberry plants. There are probably others that I could have chosen, for example, um, onions or garlic because their strong odor repels pests. But I have a whole bed dedicated to onions and a whole bed dedicated to garlic. So I'm going to do turnip. And I've got, these are my turnip seedlings. They're quite leggy, so I've got my fingers crossed. I'm going to plant the seedlings here in the front of the bed. And then I've taken out my seeds of turnip and I'm going to plant turnips all along there and hope for the best that they will survive. Well, I have this raised bed. It's my last empty raised bed. So I decided I'm going to dedicate this to my pumpkins. And I may put my butternut squash in here too if I have enough room. But look at my seedlings. These are my sugar pumpkins. They did really well after all. Unfortunately, I only have two regular sized pumpkin plants or seedlings. They didn't do very well. The others didn't even pop up. So I don't know what happened there, but I'm going to transplant these into the, these raised beds here. I always try to find a stick or something, a piece of wood in the raised bed to help me sort of pull the plant out of these cups. Because they can be hard to pull out. There, I got it. Look at those roots. Well, I ended up having 12 sugar pumpkin plants, which is awesome. One of them looked a little bendy. I don't know if it's going to make it, but the others look pretty strong. And I've got two um, regular pumpkin plants here. I planted, I think, six of them and only two of them came up. So it's hard when you're trying to grow seedlings indoors and you don't have a greenhouse, but I keep trying. <laughs> I only have one summer squash that made it out of six um, summer squash is that yellow zucchini. So I'm gonna actually put that here if I can find my stick again. I'm just gonna put this summer squash right down here and we'll see what happens. I've never actually planted summer squash before so I'm gonna see. And I've got plenty of room here in my raised bed so I'm gonna plant some winter squash, early butternut squash. I love butternut squash and I did actually plant some seeds in the window but they didn't make it and I have lots of nice seeds here so why not try. I'm just gonna put them into the ground just like that and cover them with soil. Oh I'm getting dead. Oh god these are relentless black flies. I can't stand them. <laughs> okay, just so I know where I'm putting them, I'm not going to bury them deep right now because I want to be able to put plenty of them in here, but not too close to each other. And I'll put one over there and one over here. There we go. And I've got some for next year. Oops. A couple fell out. Leave them there. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to bury them. I'm just putting dirt over them. 
There we go. The soil is pretty wet, but I am going to water where the seeds are. One thing that's really important for me to do is to make sure that I know what plants are in what raised bed. Um, in this raised bed, I have four different varieties, so I always try to make myself a plan. And I put, you know, 12 sugar pumpkins. I have one summer squash. I have two regular pumpkins. And then I planted one, two, three, four, five, six or seven butternut squash and that way i know you know what's coming up when and what i can actually plant in this climate in this soil at this time of year i'm building some hoop houses to go over my seedlings that i just transplanted because it's actually supposed to start raining this afternoon and it's going to be raining for three days in a row and I don't think there's going to be any more frost on my fingers are crossed that there won't be any frost but basically I'm going to show you how I'm doing it I bought this PVC tubing it's pretty cheap you can get it at hardware stores and that's how you make your hoops and the way that I found is the best way to keep them in is I don't even know what these are called I bought these plastic things and I'm basically going to be screwing them into the sides of my raised board, uh, raised bed, and the end of the PVC tubing is going to go right inside of them to hold the hoop in place. So I'm going to do that now. This is hard to do with all the bugs. I may have to stop after this. <laughs> I'm not good with bugs. All right, let's do this. Get the microphone out of the way. So I installed this little loopy thing here into my raised bed. And as you can see, it holds the PVC tubing. And I'm gonna put one on the other side too. So it's gonna make a nice little hoop. And I'm just gonna put two in this bed, one here and one here because all I want to do is protect the seedlings. And I only put seedlings on the front of the bed. The rest is all seed and the raspberry bushes, they don't need to be protected from the rain. But we're supposed to have rain for a couple of days and I want to make sure my seedlings are really, really in good shape. Just a note on frost, if the temperature drops below zero Celsius, I think that's 32 Fahrenheit, I may be wrong, <laughs> then there's a risk of frost. And if you have transplanted your seedlings or if you have planted into the ground or in pots and the seedlings are just starting to come up, the frost could kill them. And it's not necessarily the cold that could kill them, it's the frost because when a seedling gets frosty, the 
cell walls become damaged. And when the sun comes up the next day and starts warming up those seedlings, um, they defrost too fast and it kind of burns the plant in a way and the damaged cell uh, structure cr causes the stems and the leaves to just die. So you don't want that to happen after you've put a lot of effort into, you know, raising your seedlings and transplanting them and hoping for a great harvest. So you have to find a way to cover them if there's a chance of frost or even if there's a chance of heavy rain or heavy wind that could damage your seedlings too. That's why I'm putting up these hoop houses. Um, I have this old roll of vapor barrier that the people who lived here before me left behind. Vapor barrier is used in walls to help um, it's it's a vapor barrier basically you put it over your insulation but they left it here and I figured that's going to be a perfect covering on top of my hoop houses you could use poly tarp for a hoop house or if you don't have these PVC tubes you can always put oh, I hate these black flies I'm getting eaten Whew. okay back on track what was I saying yes you could use a blanket or a sheet as long as it doesn't touch the leaf of the plant. Um, you could put cardboard, you could put a piece of wood. Uh, for my pots, you could always bring your pots indoors. I'm leaving my pots outdoors, but I'm going to be putting cardboard on top of them or wood on top of them, or maybe just some of this vapor barrier just to cover them up for the next three or four days. Well, there's a lot of rain and wind around here. Paying attention to the weather is part of the gardening game, isn't it? We kind of have to go with whatever weather we have and mother nature's in charge and we can only work along with her, but it's always worth it. My piece is way too large, but I'm going to basically staple it into this side of the raised bed and pull it over to the other side and leave a little bit so I can put some rocks over it and I'm going to trim the rest. Stapling it to one side will help keep it sturdy and just putting rocks on the other side I can always just pull it over when the sun comes out or when the seedlings start to get stronger. As you can see, I didn't cut the vapor barrier so that it touched the ground. And I did that for a reason. I'm not trying to protect it from uh, the weather, meaning cold weather or frost, because my frost, um, the frost is supposed to be gone for the season. But I wanted just to protect it from the heavy rain we're supposed to get over the weekend. So that's why I left it kind of open here so that there's just a little bit of airflow so that the seedlings do have some air and they're not going to sit in that wet soil uh, for three days because I don't want them to drown either. So I tried to basically push down. I folded the sides and I pushed them down with heavy rocks and I'm going to keep an eye on them. If I see that that doesn't work, I might have to actually somehow secure it up here to the top of the hoop houses. I can always just, you know, um, put a, a twist tie in between just to make sure that it's secure to the top. But I think my rocks should do it. I just wanted to show you something. Uh, we had a big windstorm last night. So when I woke up, these the vapor barrier here on my hoop houses were all blown off so I did have to actually come back and put twist ties to secure them and I'm hoping that that will keep them safe from the wind but they're doing a great job for the rain my seedlings are all safe under there 
I'm going to do the same thing for my pumpkin and squash bed. Now, luckily for me, so I don't have to be out too much longer with the black flies, I had already installed those little loopy things in this raised bed two years ago. I'd completely forgotten. They're way under the dirt. So I don't have to go through that process. I just have to push the PVC piping in. Let me get to the other side. I have to find it. It's under here somewhere. I see it. There it is. There. And that's it. I think I have one in the middle and one at the end, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to staple it to one end, make it large enough that I can put rocks all the way around it. Well, this hoop house is built over my pumpkin patch. I'm pretty happy about that, my pumpkin and squash patch. Now, for this one, I don't have any airflow. And since it's not raining yet, I'm actually gonna just take these rocks away and secure them like this. And I think I'm actually going to leave it like that. I'm gonna leave it open on one side and again, I'm going to keep an eye on it to make sure the wind doesn't just blow it right off. If it does, I'll come in again with twist ties and I'll just put a twist tie top on there. Well, I decided to take a break. I'm in my shed now and it feels like heaven in here. There's no bugs and it's actually quite cool in here. So I'm going to prepare some of my planters. I bought these planter pots at the dollar store. As we all know, nothing's really a dollar at the dollar store anymore. These were $4 each. That might seem a little expensive, but these I can reuse for years and years and years, so they are a nice investment. I already have about 20 or 30 of them, but they're all dirty from last year, and I really don't want to be outside with the black flies anymore, so I decided to come in here and I'll use my new ones today. I'm just going to, as you can see at the bottom here, there's three holes that are sort of pre pre-drilled on these planters. I'm just going to go in with my drill and I'm going to drill right through them. It's very quick. It's thin plastic. You could probably even use just um, a, a screwdriver and a hammer just to get through there. Ooh. That one's not... Uh, that hole hasn't been pre-drilled. Interesting. I'll get through it. There I go. So I guess maybe you might need a drill for some of these. But now it has drainage holes and I'm going to fill these up with earth and I'm going to transplant some of my plants. I'm actually probably going to do this part outside, which I don't really want to do. So I have to put the head net back on, but at least I can get all of these pots prepared with their drainage holes. And I'm taking my time so I don't have to go back outside too soon. <laughs> this one too. Drainage hole hasn't been drilled completely. Let me get this out. There we go. Ten more times. Oh, 
All right, that's the last one. I just wanted to um, say something about washing. Uh, if you use your pots one year, you should always wash them before you put your plants in them. And I already washed these. I forgot to mention that before. When I got them, I laid them out on the grass. I poured a little Dawn soap in them, and then I took the hose and I just washed them all out. Um, you should always wash them before you put your plants in, especially if you've used them the year before. Because if there's dirt in them, leftover dirt in them, they could carry whatever, if there was a disease in the, on the plant, if there was some kind of fungus or something like that, it could carry on to your plant. So always make sure you have nice, clean pots. Well, the wind has picked up a little bit, so that's good for me because the black flies have gone away. I'm still keeping my head net on though because there's a few of them hanging around. So basically what I've done is I'm, I've put some cardboard down on the ground and I've put my planters on the cardboard and I've filled them up with topsoil. And I'm going to transplant my seedlings into each pot. Usually I just put three seedlings in each pot, but in some cases I'm going to put four because maybe one of them doesn't look so strong and it might not make it. So I'm basically transplanting today my yellow and green beans, my peas, my melons, my cucumbers, and over there I'm going to transplant my sunflowers. I finally got all of my seedlings planted, at least the ones that I had planned to plant today, and that was only about one third of what I have. Two thirds of my seedlings are still going to stay in the window until they get just a little bit stronger so I can transplant them. I basically transplanted most of them in pots, and as you can see here, I used those water bottles that I cut each end off, and I dug them into the dirt to sort of support and trellis them. Uh, the beans and the melons here are supported. The peas, I didn't have any uh, water bottles left, so they're on their own, but usually they're pretty strong. And last but not least, I transplanted my sunflowers. I only, I, tra I actually planted, ugh, I'm having a hard time talking. I planted, I think, 18 seeds, and I ended up only having six flowers that survived because of the leggy seedlings and I'll put a link in the description or in the information card above about leggy seedlings and the chance that I take every year starting my seeds indoors in the window but I did get six so I did the same thing I took those water bottles and they're cut on both ends and they're used they're basically here to trellis them to help them in the wind as you can see and when we're going to have that rain so that they don't just break in half so it was a day well spent. What a day. I am so glad to be in my screen house right now, away from those black flies. There's still some lingering in here, but nowhere near as many as there were that were constantly swarming me out there. That's the only thing I'm not happy about being outside in late May and early June is the black flies are relentless. I, and, and I don't even understand why they were put on earth. They serve no purpose other than to annoy and to bite. <laughs> That's the only thing that they do, as far as I know. But it's a small price to pay to be living in the country, surrounded by nature, and to be able to have a huge garden. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I hope that you enjoyed this video, my friends. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time on Rain's Kitchen and Garden. Cheers. Bye.